Hello and welcome back to Chamber Chats with the Castroville Area Chamber of Commerce. I am your host, Olivia Stone, and I am here with Jamal Cottrell, a personal life coach, trainer, and speaker of any trails fitness and coaching. He enables others to live their life to the fullest, building the confidence and personal strength needed to succeed. One thing he knows for sure is with the right set of skills and abilities, anything and everything is possible. Thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. What made you decide to become a life coach? i say after 20 years of serving in the military, uh, growing up in the city of Chicago, I developed a certain set of skills and I wanted to implement those skills and give back to the community with those skills. I didn't know how to go about doing so. I did a lot of volunteer work. And then one day I just stumbled along that the actual job was called life coaching. So I took that step forward. And how do you help clients reach their goals? Uh, the first thing I do is, is find out what their goals are. Make sure that the goals are obtainable. And then um, just go ahead and start with the list. You know, what's important to you? Um, how does this make you feel? Uh, what brings value to, to your life and to your situation? And uh, just assess it from there. And how often do you meet with clients? It depends. Um, some clients is based on contracts. Um, other clients are companies, so those are quarterly or annually, so it just depends on who the client is. What would you say your ideal client is? Ideal client um, is somebody who's who's ready to work. Uh, it's, it's coaching is no different than a, being in a sport, practicing for a spelling bee or a speech. Uh, you have to be committed, dedicated, um, understand that, there's, that you're, you're not necessarily happy with your situation and that you're you're ready to move forward. And that way, they, it makes it easy for both of us. So that way, I'm not trying to extract information out of you. You're not searching for information to give me. Uh, you're eager, you want to move forward, and you're ready to learn, and you want to be coached. Your meetings, are they in person or virtual, or it depends on the client? It depends on the client. Um, just this morning, I was working with the client in Singapore. Um, so last week, I was working with the clients in France. And tomorrow, I'll be working with some clients here locally in San Antonio. So it just depends. So virtual, uh, in residence, hybrid, I'm flexible. How is your approach and life skills different than others? Uh, I guess it's just um, being comfortable with yourself, uh, understanding what you've been through in life, how you persevered, and then uh, understanding people. Um, I mean, life coaches are all over the place, but not every life coach is for every person. Uh, everybody's situation is different. Uh, the first thing is understanding understanding the situation, taking emotion out of it, being able to make a sound, logical decision, uh, and just getting to know that person, or getting to know those clients. And I think that's most important. Uh, once you identify with the client, and you share a little bit with yourself, with the client, and uh, that relationship is established, uh, I think it's important to emphasize relationships. And then therefore you can, you know, because not every client is, is for a coach, not every coach is for a client. So you may need a coach, but I may not be the best coach for you. Um, so it's just understanding the situation and, and, and how to move forward. What is the Maxwell DISC method? Basically, uh, an assessment system uh, that, that breaks down it's communication, it breaks down organization, it breaks down the type of person, type of personality that you may or may not have. Uh, and, it, and it tells you how to communicate effectively with those individuals design with those type of personality traits. Uh, once you've effectively understood how to engage with those individuals, now you can put together a plan or program uh, that helps best move you forward. Uh, okay, so you, you start off with this assessment then so that you can understand wh what the clients need? So ideally, that would be best is you sit down with the client. Um, once you go through the paperwork, terms of agreement, the confidentiality reports, uh, one of the processes, is to ask the client, hey, would you like to, you know, are you interested in this assessment? Um, and then you break down and explain to them the purpose of the assessment and how it can be fruitful and beneficial to them uh, and or the organization. Uh, or, and or say if they're doing, they're doing the assessment with, say, their children, their family, uh, the assessment could be for anyone or anything. Uh, but you take the information and knowledge from that assessment and show how you can move forward and communicate and navigate, uh, whether it be life or throughout an organization. Okay.
Can you tell us about the leadership game? So this one right here is the youth leadership game. Uh, it's, it's broken down with the different books throughout the Maxwell collection. Uh, it, it's broken down to effective communication, leadership skills, and a collective of, of different genres. Um, you can tailor it towards the, the youth that you're working with, and then it can be used to highlight points that need uh, necessarily more points of emphasis as far as for building, uh, whether that be effectively communicating, leadership skills, uh, just it can be a plethora of different things, but you can identify and target it towards that demographic that you're playing the game with. Uh, it's a good experience to have with a room full of, say like if you were at the Boys and Girls Club or just a community uh, activity that you can bring everyone in and then sign teams and then talk about different scopes and different leaderships of where people are on in the different, different parameters, uh, whether it be low, medium, or high, and then you can also explain to them the emphasis and importance of leadership and how to get to that desired level of said leadership. Right. And so there's also one for adults. Absolutely. So there's one for adults. Uh, typically, uh, it's broken down into a workshop, and this is something that can be held with management or together at, as a total team, up to 8 to 12 members. And this also breaks down the leadership within the company. You may have a boss or you may have some employees that you need to discuss certain things with. Um, ways of inadvertently or passive aggressively getting people to be motivated within the organization or the company. Or it may be ways for employees to discuss with the boss or different leadership of how they would like to be mentored, how they would like to be challenged, effectively communicated with, uh, or some things that, that work in the past but don't necessarily work in today's environment. And I think that's the biggest issue you have in most companies is leaders that have been there for a while and then now you have the newer generation coming up and they want to see change and then that's where the conflict comes into play. This will allow you to bridge that gap where it will allow you to experience something old and something new and then come together with a hybrid program that works for everyone across the board. It's all about perspective. Uh, you have to be open-minded right. and you have to be willing to accept change and criticism. That's one of the things that we're not so strong on today in today's society is constructive criticism. Right. Um, and then this brings about a lot of it because a lot of people may think it's important to lead a certain way. Some people may think it's important to follow a certain way. Um, everybody has different examples or favorites of somebody who's led them in the past, a coach or a teacher in fourth grade. Um, so it just basically boils down to what that common denominator is. Everybody agrees. Everybody's not going to agree on everything. Right. that you agree on some things and um, allow it to move forward. And this gives everybody a voice. Basically. Absolutely. Everybody gets a voice. Again, you have to be willing to listen. To listen, You have to be willing to participate because um, a lot of times, often, in group settings and environments, you have the folks that kind of shy back and won't raise their hands. Right. And so what this does is the facilitator will extract that information from those folks that tend to sit a little back in the, in the back and uh, be a, less aggressive. Uh, in the, the questioning game. Right. Well, so before we move on, let can we look at some of the cards? Absolutely. And, and this is the actual board game itself, kind of like Monopoly. It has a board. And then it has different cards. This is for the group or the team. Okay. And then it has questions on the back. Uh, for example, a leader's job is problem solving. The way you think about a problem and the way you feel about a problem will help you decide what to do about a problem. Go around the room and each person stand up, act out their natural response to a specific problem you have. So this is, and it explains at the bottom, this is coming from leading from the lockers, chapter six. So it also, that way it highlights in the books. So that way we can reference back and say, hey, if you like this type of information, it's found in these books and we can come to your area and actually do workshops on these different books as well, along with these topics. But so for this point, we just go around the room. For example, I would ask you, um, Stand up and act out their natural response to a specific problem you have have had. So, depending on what the demographic, say fourteen to seventeen, right? Some similar problems that they had. This would allow them the comfortability to stand up amongst their peers and say, "Hey, I had a problem doing this." And naturally, someone you would hope would say, "I've also had a problem doing this." Right. And now this allows us to play the problem solver, or allows them to say, "You're not alone. You're not the only per person who encountered a situation like this." Here's an opportunity for us to solve this in a group setting. This is also an adult version 
Uh, they have this, and then it's also an online version. So if you okay. want to do it virtual uh, in the conference at work in your cubicle or at home in the evening, say the boss says, let's, uh, let's do happy hour. And it doesn't necessarily have to consist of drinks, but right. everybody say it around 6 p.m., everyone jumps online, they're in their comfort zone, and then they just play a nice virtual game. Again, I can provide feedback, take notes. When it's done, it'll send a uh, printout report of things that were discussed, the high areas, low areas, and then we can set up workshops and feedback from that. Tell us about your workshops. So the workshops, uh, besides the leadership games, um, also we can do lunch and learns, uh, masterminds, uh, based off the books that John Maxwell has, uh, the effective communication and the laws of leadership. Uh, we can do those and pretty much anything that's in the category that they have in the subgenre, we can do workshops on those type of uh, classes. Okay. So you have a couple of lunch and learns coming up, correct? Yes. As a matter of fact, we, uh, we, the company does. We're doing some in June. Uh, we've submitted that information out there and uh, we'd like to get a good turnout. Um, so those have been gifted to the community so that way we can, it's, we can open up the flow of communication uh, right. between you know, the residents of Castroville and we can try to open a dialogue for the young individuals and companies as well. Can you go into more detail about the work you do for the youth, especially the new contract that you have coming up? So the objective is, uh, so you look at you look at the youth that's out there now in, in the school systems. Uh, they're pretty much targeted for for education. Um, you do have some after school programs and a lot of athletic programs, uh, but there's not a lot targeted towards the personal development. Uh, so the objective would be to teach them about effectively communicating. I keep saying effective communication because we're in an age where it's all about communication and the human factor is left out. Uh, everything's done via electronic devices, uh, not as much as person-to-person -person contact, maybe some FaceTime, different, some, some Zooms, but uh, just the communication pieces, teaching them how important it is to actually listen, uh, to, to, to formulate your thoughts, think before you speak. Um, if somebody's talking to you and you're cutting them off, nine times out of ten you're not allowing the information to process so therefore you're not really giving them a, the respect to to listen to what they have to say in turn to give them a thoughtful answer uh leadership skills so the other issue with that is you're not they may gain leadership skills by playing video games and calling in airstrikes and doing different things of that nature but the actual applicable leadership skills of being out there and understanding attitudes the gestures uh, the nonverbals or how those can be offensive or how those can be misconstrued in everyday communication practices. Uh, I think that's something in the younger demographic that we're missing is to be able to effectively teach them that. And so it's more or less the whole person concept is you're getting education, you may get a little bit of athletics, which teaches you to involve in group activities, but then you have the personal development piece that says, okay, you're effective in communicating, you're effective in educating, you're effective in social environments. Now, incorporate these three, and then hopefully this will make a, a better product right. out of some of the young individuals that are kind of out there in the environment. Right. And everything, you know, there's pros and there's cons. Social media, uh, I think we just at a point now where we have to embrace it. Um, I think social media is effective. We just, again, need to understand that there's a human on the end, other end of that, that device. Um, you have to take into consideration how you're speaking to that human. Um, the quick replies, uh, the, like the, the young folks say, we leave people on red. Well, why are you leaving people on red? Because if you're having a communi conversation with someone, you don't respond to the message. Now that person's on the other end, sitting there waiting on a response. Right. Your lack of response doesn't necessarily say how you feel about the situation, but the person on the other end, you know, now some, some form of anxiety is kicking in. What did I do for this person not to respond back? Did I, do, are they not interested in, in my product? Are they not interested in me? Uh, so much self-doubt starts to come into that. Um, again, just from the lack of understanding of effectively communicating. Uh, if I send you a message, common courtesy, reply back. I'm busy, I can't get with you right now, but don't just put the phone down and walk away because you don't feel like being bothered. And I think um, social media has opened the door for that but I think if we can counter and come in and say, hey, this is why it's important. Um, you have feelings. You like to be taken in consideration when something's said. You don't like to be ignored. So this is the same concept as if you don't answer, 
you're ignoring that person. So the way it makes you feel, it makes this person feel on the other end of that device. But because they're electronic devices, that human factor is it's not there. So now they may not understand that. You know, does that make sense? It makes complete sense. And that wouldn't just be for the youth. Absolutely not. <laughs> I mean, I'm just replaying some things in my head. Right, so. right. But you know how it is. Um, at some point, a certain age, you become uh, more or less accustomed to doing things a certain way. Right. Versus at a younger age, they're still learning and they're still developing. And then if you catch them at that age and say, hey, what you doing? I won't say that it's wrong. I'll just say that it can be affecting people in certain ways. Uh, think about the ways that you would like to be affected. Each one, teach one put positive energy out into the world, that positive energy comes back to you. So just along those lines, it's getting people just to think a little bit differently, a little less selfishly, and um, you know, a little bit more openly and honestly into making other people feel good as well. Right. Well, I'm excited then for the launch and learn. <laughs> if we wanted to learn more, how will we do that? You can uh, reach out, contact me you know, via cell phone. Uh, my contact information is 210. 724-4474 or send me an email um, or reach out to the chamber and uh, you know have someone reach out to me that way. We're also sponsoring the uh, Medina Valley High School this year uh, football team. So we'll have some our information and apparel that will be spread throughout that way as well. So we're trying to get out there in the market and uh, you know hopefully get some, some clients. Well, I will put all of the links. So I will tag your Facebook page and put the website and then your phone number and email address. I'll put that in the description so that you'll have that. Is there anything else that you would like to add that we didn't cover? No, I, I think that pretty much covers it. I don't want to you know, take all your time, uh, but it's just, again, you know, um, we take so much time in updating our, our, our iPhones, our Androids, making sure our computer software is up to date. Uh, why would you not make sure that your software is up to date? Uh, you can't run on the same information that your parents and your grandparents gave you. Times are changing. Um, update your software. You know what I mean? Get, get a book. Get some information. Um, you should be learning something new every day, uh, trying to be a better person to contribute you know, to the society. And this is probably one of the better ways to go about doing so. All right. Thank you so much hey, for being for here. Me. I'm excited to play this game. All right. Thank you.